to CCD. Now today I have a special guest. I have Cor Kellstrom, who is the CTO of Concordium. Welcome, Cor. Thank you, Claire. So Cor, if we look at Concordium, everyone knows it's a layer one blockchain with an ID layer. Let's concentrate or let's focus on the ID layer. Can you tell me more about that and why it makes it so different from other layer one blockchains out? Absolutely. So in order to get a Concordium account, you first need to go through an identity verification process. And then typically you'll upload a picture of your passport, do a liveness check with a selfie, and then you get an ID. And that ID is stored in your wallet. So um, every time you do a transaction on Concordium, the ID or the reference to the ID is baked into the, the core blockchain. The actual ID information is not there because that would violate GDPR and, and, and other such regulations. So we don't want to do that. Nope. Um, <laughs> but we do actually have the framework in place that if, if law enforcement comes knocking, we can, we can give the information so that they can unlock who actually did what transactions on the chain. Mm. And of course, that's important for regulation. But what's really exciting uh, for me, and I think for anyone using Concordium going forward, is that we are now taking that to the next level. Mm. So after we've released Sirius and after we have the delegation out there, we will actually be building a, um, an infrastructure within the wallet so that you can start building applications that take advantage of this information that you have in your wallets. Yes. If you think about the way that you log into websites these days, you either store your username or password, um, or you store all your credentials with Google or Facebook or, mm. or some of the, the, those big players out there, in reality, you don't have control of your information. You're giving it away to someone else, right? What you can do with Concordium and the infrastructure that we are putting in place is you can control your own identity. This is really what we call self-sovereign identity. Mm -hmm. The ID attributes are in your wallet, on your mobile phone, and you decide what you want to give to whom and when. Right? So the framework we put in place will allow developers to build applications that can ask things about you. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you go to my liquor store online and you want to buy a bottle of whiskey, well, when you go to the checkout counter, I might actually want to know if you're older than 18. Mm, mm. I do not need your name. I mm. don't need your birth date, which is what most applications will ask for these days. I just need to know, are you older than 18? Sure. So my application can ask that question and, mm. and the wallet will then pop the question up and says, hey, Claire, uh, calls liquor store wants to know, are you older than 18? Mm. Are you interested in giving this information away? And you can mm. say yes or no. Yeah. If you say yes and you are indeed older than 18, well, then, you know, I'll probably sell the bottle of whiskey to you and, <laughs> and you can be off your way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you're not, well, then I should know for sure that you're not, right? Mm. So uh, we use zero knowledge proofs and, 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 and other strong crypto in order to actually do this. Yeah. And, and that's what's coming. That's really interesting. And, uh, but I'd love to round up by just talking about what are the highlights for Concordium coming up, especially when it comes to the DeFi roadmap. Uh, so the DeFi roadmap is now in place and, uh, and we know exactly what we need to provide uh, in the ecosystem around Concordium in order to make it super interesting for anyone who, who wants to, to put their money where we are. And uh, the first thing that's coming up is a bridge. Um, you know, we need to connect Concordium to the rest of the world and we are bridging to Ethereum uh, as the first step and then we'll be bridging to more chains um, in, in the coming months basically. So within about a month um, or so, mm -hmm. uh, no promises, we should be having an Ethereum bridge. And, and that allows us to provide liquidity from, from Ethereum. Uh, in sort of the longer term scheme, scheme of things, in, in towards the end of the year, we'll be having a decentralized exchange as well, which will allow anyone to, to swap uh, different token types to Concordium and back and forth, right? So that will really provide um, connectivity. Excellent. Thank you so much, Cor, for speaking with us today. And I hope that you've enjoyed this episode today. If you'd like to find out more about Concordium's research and technology, then check out concordium.com. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Oh, remember to like and subscribe us. I'm Clara Brown and I'll see you soon.